This lighthearted science fiction parody film by director Dean Pariseau was released on Christmas Day in 1999, where it eventually doubled its $45 million budget. The brilliantly written script follows a group of washed up television actors from a long defunct space opera show who have to play their characters for real when an alien race requests their help. The entire experience is an obvious but faithful nod to Star Trek, satirizing not only the larger than life attitudes of its cast, but also the techno jargon, sensational scenarios, and its rabid fandom. The 102 minute story opens by showing us a quick glimpse of the show within the film, where we're introduced to the cast via their on-screen characters. Tim Allen stars as the egotistical and headstrong leader, who has his dignity bruised when he overhears fans at a convention saying he's pathetic has-been. This wake-up call was reportedly based on an actual event that happened to Allen's real-life analog, William Shatner. For me, Tim will always be the tool man, but he captures the swagger, confidence, and annoyed attitude of a TV star perfectly here, even managing to have his shirt ripped off to assert his sexual appeal. At 50 years old, Sigourney Weaver is as beautiful as she is talented in the second lead, constantly bitter about her character's lack of purpose on the show, which has now been translated to an actual outer space adventure. She flatly remarks on their situation, we're actors, not astronauts. They're joined on board the NSCA Protector spaceship by Alan Rickman as a British theater actor, reluctant to participate. Tony Shalhoub as a non-pulsed engineer apparently intended to be Asian, Sam Rockwell as the glorified extra only in attendance for his plucky comic relief, and Darley Mitchell as a grown-up child actor. The rest of the equally incredible cast includes Enrico Coliatani, Justin Long in his film debut, and Missy Pyle. The original screenplay is undoubtedly a cult classic, but it's this group of actors that make it all work so flawlessly. Let's get out of here before one of those things kills Guy! Wait, wait a minute! We're not going anywhere without a beryllium sphere. We need a plan. Fred, I need a diversion to clear the compound of those things. Then Alex and Gwen and I will go get a sphere. Tommy, get up on that ridge, and if you see him come back, give me a signal, all right? Why does this sound so familiar? Assault on Voltrex 3, episode 81. We're doing episode 81? Whatever, the one with the hologram, the wall of fire. Well, how the hell is Fred supposed to project a hologram? Are we doing episode 81 or it's not? It's just a rough plan, guy. What difference does it make if it's episode 81 or not? Because I died on episode 81! Episode 51, right? 51. 51. 51. No, you, Chris. Why are you listening to this fellow? May I remind you, he's wearing a costume, not a uniform. The briskly paced PG-rated romp is assembled with impressive visual effects and an inspirational sounding score by David Newman. Without prior knowledge of Star Trek or its many tropes, Galaxy Quest is still a wonderfully fun time that delivers plenty of laughs, but for those who have attended conventions and followed the film's inspiration, the payoffs and situations are undeniably incredible. Like when Weaver angrily rants about a pointlessly contrived obstacle that only exists because it was once on the old TV program shouting, THIS EPISODE WAS BADLY WRITTEN! But the disclaimer that closes out the credits, as with most movies, purely coincidental my ass, some of the characters are direct analogs of their Trek counterparts. Although it constantly parodies Trek and its fans, it always does so with love and respect, allowing a pivotal moment of life-saving exposition to be delivered by the one person who understands interstellar situations the best, a devoted fan. Worth watching again and again, this is a touching and spirited homage to Star Trek that approaches its equally absurd premise with admirable believability. The even-numbered Trek film that fans deserve, Galaxy Quest is a truly fantastic spoof of sci-fi culture. And here's what you had to say about it in the YouTube comments. <music> Applauding its pitch-perfect satire and the chemistry of the cast, you thought this was awesome. And I definitely have to agree. When I first saw this in theaters 15 years ago, I didn't appreciate it as much as I do now, having since been to some of those nerd conventions and seen every episode of Star Trek. And Rockwell makes me laugh every time. I thought it was awesome too.